You know, it's been a bad week uh, when you come across a headline about a guy saying in an interview that it's great that he gets death threats. <laughs> Chris Graham here talking AEW pro wrestling beat. And the guy I'm talking about who thinks it's great to get death threats is Tony Khan, the uh, head honcho of AEW, the founder, the president, the CEO, the chief bottle washer. And I'm not sure if I'm kidding when I talk about the chief bottle washer thing. He does everything there, even though he has the money to make sure that he can have lots of help. He doesn't really use it very much. Um, yeah, A lot of stupid things happening the past week in AEW. And I love AEW as a product, and I want to really see it succeed. I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I think maybe last week, the last couple of weeks have been a jump the shark moment for AEW, and I'm hoping not. But let's let's go through it. Khan, not far removed from putting on maybe the biggest, well, it's certainly the biggest non-WWE pay-per-view of all time. Uh, just a couple of months ago in London, um, 80,000 fans were there. Uh, the, the Wembley Stadium was packed. An amazing show, too. I mean, just top to bottom, great show. But uh, even before it ended, I mean, almost before it started, uh, an incident with his top star at the time, CM Punk, backstage. Uh, even though he then sends CM Punk out for a match with Samoa Joe, has CM Punk win the match? Uh, the backstage incident, which involved uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, the son of the late actor Luke Perry, uh, Khan said made him feel his life was in danger. He decided to fire him in the days after the, the all in pay per view event, as it was called. Since then, a, a ratings and attendance uh, at live events for AEW, both at its Dynamite and Collision shows, have cratered uh culminating in last week's uh head to head between AEW and WWE uh, AEW had to move its its um, regular Wednesday night show last week to Tuesday because of the National League playoffs um Tuesday is the night that um had for the last several years WWE has broadcast its NXT show NXT is the so-called developmental brand of WWE but um, in recent months, the, the company has been using that show, uh, using more of its top stars from SmackDown and Raw on that show to help boost the ratings because it's on TV and you want to get some better ratings for it. Uh, and so last week, WWE decided, hey, AEW is coming on our night. They want to load the show up. They put John Cena on, The Undertaker, Paul Heyman, among many others. And, uh, you know, hot shot it, as we like to say in the wrestling business, um, with, their, with their car left out, Cody Rhodes, another top name former AEW guy can't forget him so when you put those two shows together I mean you can factor a lot of things out uh NXT you know WWE loaded up the card AEW's moving nights you know and it was it was weird for me I knew the nights were moving but and I still had to remind myself last Tuesday gotta watch Dynamite tonight I'm a big Dynamite fan I'm a big AEW fan so I had to remind it was just it was weird you know you have to remember so I think that there's a factor there. I'm, I'm not using that as an excuse because it's the, the ratings are what they were. The numbers, uh, NXT averaged 918,000 viewers uh, for its two hours head-to-head. -head. Uh, AEW Dynamite averaged 609,000, and that's a big departure. AEW uh, on Wednesdays has been getting near a million the last few weeks. Uh, NXT didn't go up as much as WWE would like to have seen it go up. Uh, that 918,000 was about 100,000 higher than it's th that show has been drawing in viewers in recent weeks. You know, to put John Cena and The Undertaker particularly uh, on that show and only get 100,000 more viewers, you know, that is that is something that, uh, you know, wasn't uh, certainly wasn't under plans for, for WWE, though they did get the big win. I mean, head to head, 300,000 more viewers on average uh, for those two hours. Tony Khan uh, came out and uh, in a tweet storm of all time, uh, you know, cited uh, how I think the first thing he was he talked about how uh, it's the first time that John Cena and The Undertaker have been on a show uh, on a on a TV program that drew less than a million viewers, and that was you know almost like he was saying we did that to them. Well, that's one way to look at it, I suppose. Uh, the that there were other uh, you know other things he he went into he before the the show uh, before that head to head uh, a text um, with with a picture uh, with the message bald asshole that was directed at either Paul Levesque or Shawn Michaels or both he had some fun 
on social media with uh, Vince McMahon's various legal misdeeds of the last 18, 12 to 18 months. Uh, he had a really odd interview with Dan Lebitard on the Dan Lebitard show where uh, Tony Khan is is famous for, <laughs> to at least wrestling fans, not famous worldwide, but famous to wrestling fans for doing interviews and then not answering questions, basically getting the interview question and then answering the question he wants to kind of like a, a really bad politician uh tony khan would be a a really good really bad politician based on the way he was jumping away from questions in this interview uh with dan lebitard who i mean to, dan lebitard is a mainstream sports guy who covers wrestling on his podcast on his podcast yes podcast now uh on a regular basis and and has you know guys on his staff people on his staff who are really knowledgeable about pro wrestling asking good questions tony khan gets the time on there and, and then turns it into an embarrassing display uh the booking for aew's dynamite was was a rather embarrassing display to really just not a lot going on in this head-to-head -head battle which i mean aew promoted heavily as is you know really important sign of how things were going the health of it AEW, they just didn't put a good show together to go head to head with WWE. Honestly, neither did WWE on its side, but they at least hot shotted it enough with the with the um the big name performers. And so this is a this is a tough time to be an AEW fan, you know. And then as a journalist, I've got to weigh in that you know it's this this isn't even just dating back two months to the cm punk firing it, this dates back more than a year to the first issues backstage with cm punk and the executive vice presidents of the company um so named by tony khan matt and nick jackson the young bucks and kenny omega they had a backstage run in at a after a pay-per-view last september 2022 that um you know, led to a year of, of issues that, that really never got resolved. That's why we saw what happened in Wembley happen in Wembley. Um, so there's that. There's the fact that Khan has one of the top two guys in wrestling uh, on his in his employ, uh, MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, the uh, current AEW world champion. It's him and Roman Reigns. And I'm not just saying because of the world champions. I'm not just putting those two guys in the same category, in the same breath, because they're world champions. MJF is uh, 26 years old he's going to be a star in this business for the next 10 or 15 years and it's not going to be very long before he's the biggest star in this business and as aew world champion now we'll see him punk on there's really no one for him i, I like to say the word or the, the term dance partner there's no good dance partner for for mjf and aew at this stage uh uh you know everything had been building for months towards a mjf cm punk match um, and and now that's gone. Well, now MJF is reduced to uh, he he was he's he's part of a tag team with Adam uh, Cole. Adam Cole now out injured with a broken ankle, but this tag team won the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship, secondary promotion in the AEW family, and MJF has been out defending those tag team belts by himself, as opposed to defending his world title. That's how that's how bad things have gotten here with 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 the booking with this company. Adam Copeland was brought in at the last pay per view Wrestle Dream uh, earlier this month. Um, his first TV match with Luchasaurus, which was last week on Tuesday in the head to head battle, uh, drew abysmal numbers, less than six hundred thousand viewers for the fifteen minutes. Um, horrible numbers. And so is Adam Copeland the solution? I, I thought perhaps when he debuted that maybe he would be the answer to CM Punk being gone. But, you know, first returns do not look good in any way, shape, or form. So, um, you know, the bad news for Tony Khan, he, he's he, – <laughs> He loves if you if you listen to any interviews he's ever been in, he loves to talk about how everything is great. And he's you know you want to think that's because he's positive. I think it's because he's he 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 took way too much to heart some lessons from a PR flunky uh, that you you know never show weakness. But if he thinks it's great that he's getting death threats, and his answer went into how that shows the passion of the fan base and how great it is, and they love their product and. Well, um, if you think it's great getting those death threats, you're probably going to get fewer of them, given how 
unenthusiastic the fan base is getting over your product. I hate to say that. I'd like to see things move in the right direction, but I'm not too confident that Colin is going to get it before things move beyond his ability to fix it. So uh, if you have any comments on this particular podcast or video, uh, if you know, and I'll link to the column that I wrote uh, about this a few days ago. Uh, please send me an email at chris at augustafreepress.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Any of anything else in the world of pro wrestling, anything else in the world of pro sports. Um, again, chris at augustafreepress.com. Love to hear from you. Love to engage. Uh, maybe it'll, it'll, it'll inspire another podcast and video uh, like this. So hope to hear from you soon. Until then, thank you so much for your time.